Hey fellow readers, today I'm going to be reviewing the light novel Spice and Wolf volume number one by Asuna Hasakura. This novel focuses on main character Kraft Lawrence, who is a traveling merchant. Now, one day as he leaves one of the villages that he deals with, he discovers that he has a stowaway in his cart, and it is a beautiful young girl who just happens to have a wolf's ears and tail. And she tells him that she is actually the god of harvest, the wise wolf Holo, in human form. And that she's decided to leave the village and she's wanting to head home to her homeland in the north. Now Lawrence is faced with a problem. Does he take Holo with him? Does this present him with perhaps an opportunity? And what kind of adventures will they find themselves getting involved in? Now this one's a little bit unique in terms of the light novels that I've been reading in that the main character is actually a grown man in his 20s who has a full-time career and it actually deals with his future aspirations. As a traveling merchant, Lawrence travels between different cities and small villages doing a trade of, in some cases, barter, in some cases, exchange for cash value and his aspirations are to amass enough wealth that he can open his own store and set down roots in one city. So first of all we're dealing with a bit of an older character which it sort of sets the tone of this particular novel. In fact unlike a lot of other light novels that I've been reading that are filled with action and swords and monsters and the like this particular one is mainly pushed by political and economic wrangling as sort of the main conflict of this particular story. It sounds boring when you put it that way, but it's actually really, really cool. And what makes this book particularly awesome are the main characters of Holo the wolf, Wise Wolf and Lawrence himself. Now, Holo is this great multifaceted character. This girl who is at once the sort of cocky and incredibly knowledgeable god of the harvest, but at the same time is vulnerable and hurt because so much of the world has moved away from belief and faith and caring about the gods. And Lawrence, for his part, is a man who is decent, but at the same time is willing and understands the dealings that as a merchant sometimes you have to bend the truth and sometimes there has to be a slight bit of moral ambiguity to your dealings. The two of them and the way that they interact with each other is probably the most enjoyable part of the book and certainly it's the characters themselves that drive my desire to continue reading the series going forward. There are 17 volumes in Spice and Wolf, and it's one of the first ones that Yen Press started releasing here in North America, and I believe next month they're releasing volume 15, so they've almost released all of Spice and Wolf in official English translated volumes. The other thing that's kind of cool about this particular series is that it's set in a fantasy type world, but it's a world that is so easily recognizable. It has elements of Victorian England in terms of the technological level, but at the same time, politically, it's more like a feudal type system that we would have seen in ancient Japan or in medieval Europe with kings and barons and so forth. But blended into that is a central church figure, which, even though it's not delved into too heavily in this particular book, I, I get the inkling that it's patterned a bit after the Catholic Church and the role that it served in medieval Victorian England. But at the same time, Holo herself and the discussion about entities like her feels much more like the type of things that I've seen in Japanese folklore. So, you know, animals being deified and animals taking human form and so forth and the ways that they both help and manipulate and trick humans. It, it has that very much that feeling of that sort of Japanese folklore. So it's a mishmash of a couple of different things and yet it all seems to work really, really well in this particular novel. Like I said, 
This first volume, I feel, is very much an introduction to our main characters, to get us to know them, to enjoy them, to be hooked into their story, so that we keep going. And I'm hoping and very interested to see if in future volumes we get a lot more of the world itself being fleshed out. So in general, Spice and Wolf, Volume 1, great characters, very character driven, and they're a lot of fun, very interesting, and I definitely want to read more about them. The story, like I said, is quite different from your run-of-the-mill light novel, focusing more on politics and economic manipulation and so forth, which is cool because it is so different. And there is a slightly more mature tone to the novel overall. Uh, even the humor never degrades to your accidental grabbing of breasts or nosebleeds or that kind of stuff that you see in a lot of light novels with characters, say, in that high school age group. So it's a little bit different, and that probably makes it really stand out and made me really enjoy it. So those are my thoughts on Volume 1 of Spice and Wolf. I really suggest that you check it out. It was a really fun read, and like I said, it's one of the few light novels being released right now where almost the entire series is available. We'll probably have the last volume at the current release schedule, probably have the last volume by early next year. So that's pretty promising and something to look forward to. And like I said, 17 books, so if you're looking for a long haul series, this is a great bet for you. So I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, click on subscribe so you can watch all of my future reviews. You can click and check out my previous reviews as well. I hope to see you in my next video. Until then, thanks for watching and bye bye for now.